there's four or five single actions you could take to actually impact your own health and longevity. So at that point, we've changed the entire game of one of the biggest killers in humankind. So stay with me now, because this is a little bit... You know. All right, we're diving in. This is it. Richard hey. Rossi in the house. Oh my God, he is. How you Hi. doing, man? So nice to see you. Joe Polish at the end. I don't, did you know the, of his challenge that he created? Which one are you referring to? Okay. So at the end of the annual event, there were four 10 minute talks. You were one of them. He issued a challenge to say, uh, I want, I want people to take action by the end of the year on one of the 10 minute talks. Oh. And, we're, and we're doing a competition. I think I'm the only one who picked yours. I bought the book like right away. You know, I, I was watching your talk and like, this is amazing. This is great. Yes, yes. What's the next step? So I need some homework as to like what I can do before the end of the year to, uh, it's kind of a hard thing because it's a lifetime, <laughs> but what can I do before the end of the year as uh, homework? Cool. And um, how old are you? 41. Okay. Excellent. I assume and there's something about my talk that rang true to you. Um, tell me a little bit about what you heard where you went, oh, hmm, yeah. So one, just living living longer is, I think is a good thing. <laughs> um, just in general, I'm not, I'm not one of the ones that like, okay, you know what, when I'm 80, then it's over and I just, my time is my time. I, I wanna be able to serve for as long as I can. Um, and then two, just to have a, not just length, but quality of life as well. Um, it was kind of crazy timing because when the, when this book came in, my grandmother passed away. So when I started this challenge, you know, she, she passed and, uh, and listen, she had, she had a, it's the things we always say, I guess she had a long life. She was in her nineties. Um, the last decade though, were kind of this slow decline to the point where it's like not really a life by, by the end of it. And, uh, I want to avoid that <laughs> myself and haven't just kind of seen it. Um, I was, I was fascinated by your talk to say, Hey, how can I, how can I be a, if I can't live forever, then at least be a kick-ass a hundred year old. Right. Okay. Fantastic. And are you married? Yep. I have a wife, have a son. How old's your son? 12. Okay. Excellent. So, and do you have parents that are alive? Yep. Both alive. Okay. Are they like in their seventies or sixties? Yep. Yeah. Early, early seventies. Um, That's great too. Okay. So here's the thing. What we're going to talk about isn't just about you. Mm -hmm. It's about your parents. It's about your spouse. It's very much about your son. Mm -hmm. And it's also about you. Um, but the information that we're going to discuss today can profoundly affect all of them to the degree that they are willing to take a leap of faith and realize that things are possible now that weren't possible years ago, okay? Um, and what I mean by that is that uh, there are, that the way people remain healthy now involves what I call the big four, which is stress control, nutrition, sleep, and exercise. And yet there's no evidence that that will actually extend your life. Um, what it will do is it will um, make the years you have much, much healthier. And that's and vibrant. And vibrant is my key word. You know, I want to be vibrant um, mentally and physically. So the how do I know that? You know, how the hell do you know that, Richard? Well, I know that because there are no 100-year-olds walking around who look and feel 50. There are no 90-year-olds walking around who look and feel 50, despite the fact that there are a massive number of people that work like hell on the big four uh, and have for decades. And the reason is for exactly that, um, that that's not going to extend your life. However, that is what I call the foundation of everything we're about to talk about. And I'm going to use the metaphor of a house. The foundation collapses, doesn't matter how pretty the house is. The foundation is, in fact, the big four. Um, 
because you want to build on a foundation of strength and good health when possible. The less that you um, need to fix up, the better. So that's the huge role that the big four play. It's not, I'm not poo-pooing it. I'm not saying it's not important. It's critical. Um, but above the big four, up till about five years ago, there was nothing. There was no first floor. There was no second floor. There was no third floor. Uh, and the reason is we didn't have a damn idea um, how to actually affect what mother nature is doing to us. So when you get to be about 35 years old, um, that's when the decline begins. So there was an interesting line from um, um, Hemingway's book, um, The Sun Also Rises, where they asked one of the characters how he went bankrupt. And he said, slowly and then quickly. And that's exactly how you decline slowly and then quickly. Mm. And that decline starts slowly and um, and almost uh, you know completely silently around the age of 35. Um, and th there's a list of over a hundred things that I could give you uh, and I'm happy to provide that to you that start to slowly go down. Um, but they're almost imperceptible in the beginning and you feel like a million bucks. And if you're really great at the big four, you continue feeling like a million bucks. But that doesn't mean that those things aren't happening in there. You'll learn about those in the book. There are things like um, your epigenome and your telomeres and all and and the strength of uh, your stem cells and all kinds of things that are mostly invisible um, but are happening to you, right? Um, we have a few people in Da Vinci 50 who are even younger than 40. And they're geniuses. I would never have in a million years thought about doing something like this in my 30s because I would have said, I feel great, I'm young. Well, that's exactly the moment of maximum opportunity because the older you get, the more you have to kind of reverse things that have already gone wrong um, which is another thing that we can do. So let's be real clear, first of all, on our objective. Our objective is age reversal. It's actually being able to show objectively through biomarkers and other things that you're getting younger. Um, and the reason we, we use that as the marker is that you're absolutely right. To prove age extension would take decades and decades and decades. But to show that you know, your heart's getting stronger, your blood work is getting better, that your hair is growing back, that you know, the enamel on your teeth is regenerating, uh, that your eyesight is improving, that your lung capacity is going up, that your sexual function is in, you know, super increased. There's a million things that we can show that actually go, oh, this is the X of a younger man. And that's what we, we that's what our objective is to show that those things are going back in time, not forwards in time. Um, and now we begin to have tools on the first floor, a few, not a lot, but a few. Uh, and those are in David Sinclair's book. Um, they include stem cells. They include um, a drug called metformin. I, we talk about all this. We, there's another drug called rapamycin. Um, these are safe drugs that have been on the market for decades. Um, and they just we've just now discovered that they also have properties of age reversal. Um, and then there's the second floor. And the second floor is what's coming in the next two, three, four years. Um, and there are incredibly remarkable things. Uh, that are we're right on the cusp of right now. Incredible things in terms of regenerating uh, body parts, organs, fixing things, um, and a whole bunch of other interventions that can actually move those biomarkers back. So just keep thinking biomarker, 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 right? The more biomarkers you have that you can show you're getting younger, the younger you're getting, right? Um, and then the other part of the first floor is avoiding things like cancer, right? Some of which is hereditary. Um, 
And there are, as for example, a new blood test that we're just getting access to this month out of India that detects every cancer at stage zero. So for example, if I said to you, do you have cancer? The only honest answer would be, I don't know. Um, but with this blood test, you will know. Uh, and it will identify if the if you do have cancer, where in the body it is, what kind of cancer it is. So the objective is that you do this testing every six months or a year. And if there ever is cancer, you catch it when it's so tiny that you just knock it out. So at that point, we've changed the entire game of one of the biggest killers in humankind, which is cancer. And the older you get, even if you are moving your age back, the more susceptible you become to things like this. So this is why we need to catch it and, and snuff it out quickly. Um, so then we have the, th the second floor, and that's coming in about five to 10 years. Uh, and that's gonna be modifying your genome, okay? So you're lucky, you have at least one grandparent that lived very long. Um, that means you have at least a partially great genome. Um, but we will now be able to actually do that in a, in a thoughtful manner and, and take out things that um, are causing you to age. And there are people that are doing that right now um, at Harvard and M MIT. They're doing it with pets um, and they're doing it successfully. Um, and the other way that we measure your, your age as opposed to your chronological age is something called, um, there's a certain type of blood test you can do that gives you your, your, if you will, your epigenetic or biological age. And I'm throwing some buzzwords at you, but I'm trying to just make it as few as possible. Um, and I can right now get, expose you to a therapy that will move your biological age back. Um, it's a stem cell therapy out of California. There's a company that that called True Age that um, has been working with Stanford and Harvard and MIT and all kinds of incredibly legit people and is able to actually measure what your biological age, which sometimes is identical to your chronological age. But as you can imagine, if you've been smoking all your life or doing fentanyl or whatever, it's probably you're probably older than your biological age and vice versa. Well, this is a type of stem cell treatment that can actually move those numbers back. That's actually on the first floor. That's available now, uh, but only to people who can afford it and are in the know, but it's measurable. Uh, and that's what we're always looking for. That's a key word you need to remember, measurable. I'm not interested in what happened to Joey and Mikey and Sammy and all those other people. I wanna know what happened to me and I want to be able to measure before and after and actually see a objective measurable impact of whatever intervention is going to take place. Um, so that is really the long and short of it. It is, um, it is creating a, so I would say the absolute uh, foundational elements, and I'm going to shut up and take your questions, are number one, as I mentioned at the end of the talk, don't die. And everybody laughs like that's hilarious. But it's true, you know, don't die of something stupid and don't get so sick that you're beyond help because the really, the stuff that's going to keep you alive an extra 30, 40, 50 years, that's not coming for another 10 years or so. So you want to get as much on the foundation, the first floor and the second floor that's got you aging backwards, that's got you in great shape so that when like the genetic stuff comes, you're really ready for it and uh, in good shape. Um, the second thing is uh, to take advantage of what is available now. Um, and I would say the third thing is to be is to honor those big four and realize that you do need to stay in really great shape and catch any problems incredibly early. Uh, but I will tell you that there are a lot of people who say, and you know this because they're in our groups, they go, I'm going to live to 120. Well, how are you going to do that? Well, you know, I have big dreams and I'm going to stay in great shape and I'm going to have lots of, you know, and they give you all this crap and you're like, you realize you would be the first person in human history to do that. If you actually pulled that off, you'd be the first person in human history. And do you think you're just going to do it through those things? 
No, you need you need a big hammer and lots of them because Mother Nature is not that's not what Mother Nature has in store for you. Um, so if you can actually make those changes, you have to do them using uh, techniques that will not be available to the general public for decades for a lot of the reasons that I outlined in my in my talk. And I, we can go over all of those in detail. The reason I asked about your son is because your son, through your knowledge, will have the ability to never get sick, to never get a chronic disease, to instead of declining, when he reaches that age of 35, he's going to float. And he can do that because there's going to be that intersection of what you've taught him and what he's doing and what science has got available and what you're going to have access to that maybe his classmates won't have access to for 20 years. That's going to make his lifespan 150, 180, uh, you know, like incredible. So I always think about the whole family unit when I think about um, age reversal. And I'll say, in, in, in I guess my final thought is you have to surround yourself like, with people who believe this, because if you go to a cocktail party with your wife and start talking about this, people will listen politely. And then when you turn around, they're going to go, you know, there he goes again. He's insane. So you have to be actually surrounded by a community of people that can support you and believe what you believe and help you and you help them. End of uh, end of. Of speech. Oh, I love it. That's great, man. I could I could listen for for a long time. Um, does all that make sense? It does. I'm I'm on board. Uh, I'm on board with the thesis. I don't understand the science. I'm I'm diving in and trying to figure it out. I, that I book mean, will really help. I I mean, I bought it. I'm about a fifth, uh, maybe a third of the way through it now. Um, I was I was drowning in the science at the beginning of it. A whole bunch of terms that I don't understand. But you know, I'm, I'm making my way. Uh, and up until this point in the book, it's all about the, I think probably the, the big four, um, and I'm doing it. So I'm, now I'm fasting. I eat two hours a day, uh, every day of the week, um, working out six days a week with the focus on getting the heart rate up. So it's not just a yoga session. Um, just started doing the cold stuff every day, cold shower, all that stuff. Um, what else have I done? I'm basically applying. I, I read something and I apply it and I'm filming the process of me doing it to hopefully get some, some kind of results. Um, what, what do you recommend me doing to be able to show, cause I like documenting this and Hey, let's, let's show the world what, what's possible through a, at least a use case of one is my next step to, to go to true age and get this measures done. What, what do I do next? Well, I'll give you like the cheat shortcut. Um, if you just have the ability to throw money at this problem. Um, so there's one guy that is in our Da Vinci 50 group by the name of Jeff Gladden. And Jeff is a, by profession, a, um, a, a cardiothoracic guy. But about 10 years ago, he switched to a life extension and now age reversal guy. He's a genius. And there's uh, a lot of people that we both know, like Dan Sullivan and folks like that, that actually use Jeff. Um, I've used Jeff um, and he creates a program for you that is aimed directly at age reversal. Um, and he, he, it's an N of one. It's created specifically for for you. It's executed specifically for you. It's monitored specifically for you. Um, so if you just want to jump in the deep end of the pool and say, I'm ready, I want to do this. And, you know, I can throw money at it. Um, and I'm talking like $100,000. Um, then Jeff is definitely your guy. If that is not the direction that you want to go, um, then I could make um, a list of other people who could be guides to you. I'm not that person. I'm more a student like you are. I'm just a little further down the road than you are. But um, really great anti-aging docs that could um, get you in motion right now um, and for less money than that. Um, 
considerably less money than that. Where do you live? Toronto, Canada. Okay. Well, it's not going to be in Canada. I can guarantee you that. Well, that's okay. The... I can travel. <laughs> okay. Um, so that would be the direction I would go. I mean, like if you want to show action, well, then you need to start doing the right things for you. And I'm not the person to guide you there. You need, because every person is different and everybody needs something specifically designed for them. Um, if you just wanted to take one action that could have, that would have um, a significant result, um, or you wanted to get in at a, at a lower price point, um, Peter Diamandes, you know him, right? Mm -hmm. He and Tony Robbins have started uh, two or three um, anti-aging clinics. And I was with him uh, in August and it looks like they're pretty good. Um, the first one is, uh, I think, in Florida. Um, but uh, that would be a cool thing. The other thing is, like, there's this guy I'm actually going to go out and see on Tuesday who does um, the stem cell treatments. And you could actually measure your age. Like, if you just wanted to say, here's one really cool thing I've done right now. Well, this was my age before my stem cell treatment. This is my age after my stem cell treatment. You know, I had this problem, uh, whatever that might be. Now the stem cells have helped reverse that problem. So that would be, so there's four or five single actions you could take to actually impact your own, um, your own um, health and longevity and, and show that you've done it. Who's the stem cell guy? So his name is Dr. Todd Ovakaitis, um, and he has invented um, something that is like so mind boggling uh, that I actually, David Sinclair, who's kind of the leader in the field, I was talking to David, I introduced him to Todd, he went to Todd and he's like, Todd, you're going to win a Nobel Prize for this. So basically, so stay with me now, because this is a little bit you know. All right, we're diving in. This is it. All right. So stem cells is, are a really big deal. Um, and they they um, are designed to fix things. That's why they exist. And to also lower inflammation in the body, which is great. Um, and when before we're born and up to the time we're born, we have a massive number of stem cells called embryonic stem cells. And they're doing, they're like the worker bees that are building everything and they're there. They, and they can create and build and fix anything. We lose those the day we're born. Um, but we still have a ton of stem cells in our body um, and they can be extracted previously in one of two ways, either through body fat, of which you look like you have extremely little or um, through bone marrow. Ouch. Um, but he, in, he has invented a way to extract it from blood. And not only has he figured out how to extract it from blood, but they are the closest stem cells to the embryonic stem cell. They're the most potent. They can change and, and, and into anything in, in theory, fix anything. Whereas the, the, the stem cells from muscle, sorry, from fat or from bone marrow, they, they're limited in what they can do and what they can fix. Um, so he, what he does is he extracts blood from you, a um, few tubes, does his magic on them, spins them and whatever else. And then he re-injects it into your body. And here's the magic part. He uses a patented laser to actually direct the stem cells where they're needed the most. Um, so let's say just for example, that your mom has kidney problems. You know, her kidneys aren't functioning at 100%. Well, he would aim the lasers at her kidneys so that all those beautiful embryonic like stem cells would assemble themselves at the kidneys and work to start fixing the kidney, right? If you didn't have that, the stem cells would go wherever they feel like going. Oh, maybe your mom's got an infection in her big toe. Well, they all decide to go to her big toe. 
right? So you can't direct stem cells unless you have a method of doing it. And he's invented a method of doing that. Um, and so he's moved my age back three or four years so far. Um, and he's also cured a, a inherited thing I've got actually on my hand that um, is incurable. It's not a bad thing. It'll never kill you, but it's, it's, um, it's a genetic, call it a malformation. And after he applied the laser to my hand, um, I started seeing the, the, these little calluses just start to disappear. And I showed it to my doctor and he said, you realize that can't happen. This, this goes one direction, the wrong direction, and there's nothing that can stop it. And I'm like, well, guess what? So there's, there is some magical, magical things going on out there. Um, I would rather you take, uh, you know, you're become, you become the world's expert on, and you're like a complete genius in your area. The question is, are you willing to take the time to become an expert or at least bring in a team of experts on this for you, for your parents, for your wife, for your kids. Um, it's a really, really, really big deal, but it's all below the water surface now. And if you're not willing, it's like the early days of anything, you know, you, you gotta be willing to learn about it, assemble it yourself, play around with it, know who's in the know, that's the stage we're at right now. If you're looking for turnkey, then you've got the the um, Peter Diamandes um, group, and I get you the name of them. And I think they're they're solid. Um, I haven't evaluated them my, myself, but they seem pretty solid. And then there's individual people like Jeff um, Gladden who are just you know bleeding edge on this kind of stuff. So I guess my question to you is like, you still feel great. You still look great. Um, and yeah, there are things happening inside your body right now, but for all intents and purposes, you are great. So the real question is, how motivated are you? A 60-year-old is damn motivated, let me tell you, because they're seeing the end. It's not that far away. But you are not that, you know, you've got a lot of runway. So how motivated are you? Probably not as motivated as, you know, my parents would be or my grandmother, you know, would have been if she had the option the day before. But I, I think pretty, pretty motivated for someone my age and probably older than me. Um, and and I, I think it's one, again, learning from me, but also being able to give it to other people. And for all the people like, you know, like if I can learn this and help my parents not have the same fate as my grandmother that's a pretty big win. And if I can then bring that to the world through content, I'm always trying to make meaningful content to inspire, right? Everything I make is hopefully inspirational, positive, make the world a better place, not the negativity and why you can't do things. Um, I, th I see this as kind of a next frontier. So um, I guess that the actions, I mean, the actions speak for themselves at some point, somebody can say they're motivated, but they, until they do it, I did pick up lifespan the second you said it, you know, then I reached out to you and here we are. So I, I'm, I'm open, uh, whether I think I'd love to learn it for myself, but then also to expose it and, and shine a light on it and be able to reach more people than um, otherwise it could to bring it from below the surface to, you know, slight, slightly more above through my audience. Um, yeah. So if it's, if it's Jeff or Peter or Todd or, or somebody else, um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for whatever the next step is. Well, I will tell you that um, it takes a special person to, to, to take this on at your age. You know, if you have high blood pressure and you don't treat it, you're good for 20 years. You know, that's the slow part. And then it's going to happen. And that's the fast part. Mm -hmm. um, if, um, if you smoke, you're probably good for 20 years, you know? So you're in that phase where you're good for 20 years. 
but there are things happening. And if you have the wisdom um, to, to take action now, you'll look back 50 years from now and go, I'm a genius, you know, because you'll be the guy that needs to make new friends when your old friends are all dying. Um, Cause you, you took action, you took action. Uh, I'd hate to be the person that looked back and said, I could have done it, but I didn't do it. And mm-hmm. now I'm debilitated. And, you know, I'd, I'll tell you, so I've been getting over a really bad case of sciatica, which is when the nerve of your leg is inflamed and it's pain like it's hard to describe how painful it is. And it's been going on for several weeks, getting better now. But, and I realized, you know, when you're sick like that, and it could be cancer, it could be lung disease, it could be neurological, it could be anything, all your dreams go away. Instead of being focused on creating value, you're just focused on yourself. Um, all of your all of your energy and creativity goes away because it's all absorbed in the pain. You can't be in great pain and be creative at the same time. Your world becomes so small, you lose track of days because you're just managing your situation day to day, minute to minute, and you're not living your normal life. It's horrible. And if and and it really to me, it it was e- even more of a wake up call that I never ever want this to be my fate. Um, when I'm alive, I want it to be in vibrant good health. Mm-hmm. Uh, How often are you doing the stem cell treatments? What's the recommended well, I mean, I, I, one and done? It's definitely not one and done. Um, you can the 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 average is once a year uh, or once every two years. I actually do it three or four times a year, which is the maximum you can do it. Um, Cause I'm, I'm older and I, I, I really want the maximum effect. Um, so I'd say, you know, for someone like you um, once a year, would you know, be totally adequate. Let me just give you a couple of resources right now. How do you, what do you say? Um, for, and YouTube is fantastic. And I have a little newsletter. So if you go to um, longevityage.com, you can subscribe to my free newsletter. And what happens is when I see an interesting article, I just tag it and then we put it out on this little newsletter. It's all free. If anybody wants more information on what we're doing, it's the da Vinci 50.com. I appreciate the time, man. And this is the start of beautiful things. Well, I tell you what, I really feel like my role is also to communicate uh, to the world. So I'm hoping that um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that, that that's possible and some of it might involve uh, both of us. You never know what the future holds, but I'm excited to just um, get you going. So yeah, you'll be hearing from me very soon. Cool, man. Thank you. Right. Appreciate you. Okay. Great talk to you. <laughs> Take care. Bye. If you want to see the one-on-one I did with Deepak Chopra, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. Every thought you have is a magical lie. How do we live a life with zero physical or mental weakness? This loneliness comes from the fear 